Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. I have switched up a little bit of the decor back there. I've got some Valentine's garland and whatnot. Um, I wanna get some lights involved in that. I just like light being back there. It's a bit of a work in progress right now, but what is not a work in progress is this face routine that I'm showing you. I have been wearing it ever since I like randomly grouped together these products. I haven't stopped wearing this combo. Um, I love the way it looks and I love the way it wears. And maybe this is kind of coming off of doing a lot of testing with the Makeup by Mario, which is a gorgeous foundation, but it gives the skin a ton of luminosity. And I kind of realized that out in the world, just in day-to-day -day situations, you catch yourself in a mirror, you catch yourself in a rear view mirror, you realize that sometimes having a major amount of glow on your skin is not always the most flattering. Then late in the day, especially with that foundation, it's like I'm seeing different little cracks and crevices and contours even more than I maybe want to. And this look that I'm gonna show you today, like it wears flawlessly all day. I really feel like it's my best look. It's my best looking skin. And the first three products, my primer, my foundation and my concealer, they're all drugstore. And you could probably do an all drugstore route with this, although I have a few other products that are working really well for me that I'm throwing in. But I'm just gonna do this face routine for you today. Um, this L'Oreal True Match Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. This has gotta be one of my skin's best products. I'm normal to dry. Sometimes I can get a little oily in the T-zone. Sometimes I'll sweat. This has worn well for me for a long time. You can actually see in that glass bottle I've used about half. I love this stuff, but today, it's the combo with this. I don't know why this is working so well underneath. I've really liked this paired with the Lumi Glotion too, but um, this Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup, it kind of ends up feeling, I think, a little thinner than the Glotion paired with this, and the staying power is just off the charts. Like, no touch-ups needed. Looks amazing, and some other key products here just make the skin look so great. So I'm going to get started. I've already got my skincare on and my sunscreen, and I'm going to use this Perfector 4-in-1 we reviewed this quite a while ago. It has all those claims, primer, concealer, highlighter, BB cream, but I think what it's amounted to for me and a lot of people is just sort of a glowy, thin, lightweight primer. And I have it in the shade light, so you got your little puffy tip thing. Oops, I need to click it up a little. It just ends up, I think, depositing a little thinner amount of product on my skin compared to when I'm using my Lumi Glotion stuff. Anyway, I just get that blended in using my little e.l.f. double-ended brush here. And my skin is very well moisturized underneath. I use Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, you know, my serums, my sunscreen and all. Still using Vanny Cream on the under eye area and it's just incredibly moisturizing and nice. But this gives me a thin, lightweight glow. Everyone's chief complaint about this stuff is the dropper. And it's true, like the dropper doesn't really function super well. But it's called True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I wear it in the shade 2-3 Light. I have loved this stuff. It really just does respond well to my skin. It gives a beautiful look and especially with this look that I'm pairing it with, the staying power is phenomenal. I just like kind of swipe the dropper all around and I'm again just going to use this brush and just dab it in, buff it in. It has such a pretty look, and the thing about this foundation, if you haven't heard about it before, my thought going into using this for the first time, like months ago, was that it was just going to be thin and light and like just a super hydrating, barely there foundation serum type thing. But actually, it has some really good coverage. It's more matte than you might think, but I would go more towards saying it's a natural finish on the skin, you know? Gosh, I'm surprised I don't do that more, get foundation in my hair. But it has more coverage, better staying power, and just a fresh look all day, more so than you might assume with a product of that description, you know? Tinted serum description. So I get this all blended in, and am I enjoying a bit of a glow? Yes, but does the skin feel overly sticky? Not at all. It really feels like a thin amount of product is on there, and I'm loving where the look is at so far. And then I throw in a drugstore concealer that just never gets too far off my radar, and it's Wet n Wild Incognito. This I wear in the shade Light Beige. The way I describe this one is it's a little bit lighter than e.l.f. Camo Concealer. I've kind of gotten it in my head that if I want to use this one, um, I do apply just a little bit more of it, but the staying power on it, the freshness all day, is actually really good with this. It's just turned out to be one that I really like, whether or not I'm using and wild foundations with it or not. I think the shade is just really perfect 
and I'll just do you know a little swipe right in here and right out here too and around the nose anywhere where you got maybe a little blemish redness you know your areas right up there too. I've just realized it's a really reliable concealer for me and when I first got it I remember not being quite as like super mega thrilled but I don't know just with continued use maybe different product pairings I've really turned out to like this concealer a lot so I'm doing kind of my spreading and patting it in technique it helps make sure your concealer kind of gets thinned out as opposed to getting applied more heavily in only the areas you dabbed it in. So I spread it and then I buff it and I end up getting just a great look, great staying power. And it can be applied with a sponge too. I could go with a sponge for my foundation and this step if I wanted, but I've just kind of, I don't know, been digging the brush. Maybe I get a little more coverage out of the brush and I'm liking it that way. I don't know. See where we're at? The skin is looking gorgeous. We have coverage. We have kind of this natural gleam on the skin that looks kind of airbrushed, but it's not off the charts glowy and things are not tacky by any means. Random powder that I tried out of my collection that I had used earlier on when I got it. I got it from the Boise Beauty Dalton collection and it's this uh, Doll Skin Perfecting Treatment Powder. And I thought, you know, I'll try that again. It's been a while for me. And guys, this powder looks incredible on the under eye area, pairing with this look. How would I describe it? It's a kind of a white looking powder or just off white and incredibly thin, but it's not necessarily like one of those um, silky feeling like HD powder type things. It's not quite as silky as that, which I think works to its benefit with the magic it's doing here. So I tap some into my little lid, get some on my Morphe under eye bullet brush and pat this in on the under eye and it gives the most like blurred, blurred and beautiful. It's like it takes away the shine, but it doesn't make it look dry. I don't know, I'm loving it. I mean, there are drugstore powders that I have that I love as well, like uh, Maybelline Fit Me or my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder. Those are great, but there's something extra sneaky about this one, I guess. Super thin and light, and I think it's playing into the great staying power that I'm having too. I really like how it just goes over that under eye area. It doesn't look like too much, not too thick. Obviously, you can overdo any powder, but I feel like I get a really good result with this. Now, if you are extra, extra dry in your under eye area, um, maybe this might not be for you. I might direct you more toward an e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer, but I'm just kind of talking about a look that ends up looking really good on my skin and it wears so well. It performs all day. Then this powder, this Huda Glowish powder, the Luminous Press powder. I know I've talked about this before, but it's in 03 Light. And this is a gorgeous powder. This has got to be one of the most underrated products. It's so soft and creamy, and it has just this beautiful, like, slight light catching ability. It's like if an hourglass powder, one of their um, ambient lighting powders, just had a little more softness and coverage to it. And I think this looks so pretty just all over the skin. You don't lose your glow, but you can get totally set all over. It's that softness that the powder has that it really is more like a powder foundation, but I just take a little bit. I'm only getting like little light dabs on my brush and blending it in. And it looks gorgeous all over the face. You still have like a little sheen, but it doesn't start looking like too much or greasy or break down during the day. My next steps like bronzer and blush are a little less like you have to do these to get the look. I think the whole face routine that I'm really talking about was what I just did, but this has been what I've been doing. My Refi uh, Cream Bronzer in Tan, it's so good. It's so good. It's a really unique shade for me. I don't have just a ton of bronzers that end up looking this way on my skin. And I feel like it's a convincing bronziness. You saw me use this in the last Get Ready With Me. Like, I just, I can't get enough. And, you know, it wears well too. It falls right in line with what I'm wanting out of this look. Looking good out in the world wearing well without the need for a lot of touch-ups. Like there are so many things that I think so many people get like absolutely awestruck by certain products right after they're applied to the skin. But you've got to think about how that's actually looking outside <laughs> in broad daylight. We're gonna contour with it here and try not to take it real low. Actually took it very high there. 
college cheerleading nationals last night. We made a little party of it because it was the finals. I really thought Western Kentucky was actually going to slip in there. I'm like, wow, I knew you guys were good, but I didn't know you were that good. They were number one out of semifinals with a deduction-free routine. And I really found myself rooting for them. I also wanted to see Kentucky get their title back, but either one of those, I truly thought one of them would have it. But in comes South Florida with, frankly, the little bit easier routine. But they hit it, you know, they didn't fall, and they get rewarded for that, again, for a third straight year. It's hard, though. It's very hard to try to balance, you know, the difficulty that's going to get you the points, but something that you can do consistently. In Kentucky, I felt so bad. It was like right out of the gate, one of their first moves into one of their partner stunts and it was just down. And then Western Kentucky had a couple of falls. Isn't it crazy how one performance to the next, you know, your first round, you can nail it. The next round, it could be a totally different story. Cheerleading's tough like that. Okay, so now the skin has some dimension. It's looking like, yeah, she's been outside. Really, whatever blush you want. I've been kind of getting into different cream blushes applied with my stipple brush here, this Tower 28. It's the color Happy Hour. It's so pretty. It's a bright kind of warm corally pink and I find myself liking to stipple it on and it really doesn't impact like the rest of my makeup look like everything stays looking really nice and flawless I'm not disrupting the foundation you know look at that it's so pretty and it's really pretty on the lips too I'm not sure if this particular Eco Tools stipple brush is still available. It's a really good one. But see how we can just lightly get that addition of product? I love this face routine. Love. And the first day that I was really working with this face routine that involves these three and these two, um, I was getting back into my Mario stick in the uh, raspberry color. So I, I like that as well. Next up, um, I'm pulling for my Lumi Glow Nude Palette in Moon Kissed for my highlight today, just because I love the next level softness that it gives. I love going into this shade and getting just a light little bit of brightness right in here. And it stays looking this way all day for me. Now, if you're oilier than me, maybe this is not the case. But for my skin, it is really working out. I'm not that put off by sometimes needing to touch up. Like, it doesn't bug me that much if I would need to come in and, you know, add a little powder if I was doing something late in the day. Wanted to refresh the look. That's, that's not bad. But it just kind of fascinates me how well this works. So I've got that on. For the purposes of just showing you the whole face, I'm letting you know that I bring in Kosas Cloud Set. And I do this usually at the tail end. In case I forget, uh, this is the shade Breezy. I use a little bit of this, and I just kind of hit this zone here. Right like that. Just because it further, like, mattifies and perfects and blurs that area. But this face routine is my favorite. Um, have I been doing setting spray? I haven't even used setting spray consistently. I'll go ahead and do some today. I'll do some CoverGirl Priming Glow Mist here. Like that stuff. Mm, nice fine mist. But that is my face routine. I'm going to go ahead and just finish up my look and I'll show you how it all comes together. All right, guys, so I finished the look. Uh, I just went with a really light natural eye today um, using my Clinique Duo in Strawberry Fudge. It looks like this would be a really pinky shade that I have on here, but it has just the soft golden shift and then this beautiful soft brown just going in my crease. A little black eyeliner on and mascara. And then on the lips, I'm using one of these new Buxom full-on plumping lip mattes, which yes, it does have kind of a cooling sensation. I can't make this feel like it's doing the plumping job of different glossy things because it just doesn't like, you know, do what those do to your lips. It doesn't really totally smooth them out. It's a matte. But the color's really pretty. It's the shade Dolly. So I've got that on all over for my base color here. I neatened up my line a bit with this Estee Lauder Double Wear Lip Pencil in Mauve, and then I added a little bit of this Essence Gloss. It's the shade Purple Rain, I believe. Yeah, it's just got that little bit of shimmer and shine. And now that my makeup's been sitting on my face a bit, I took that Kosas Cloud Set and I just went over things a little bit. Um, I went kind of hard with the highlight today, but I think it looks really pretty, actually. So this is my face routine. This stuff is at the core of it because it's 
keeps coming back anytime I get back into it or if I don't use it for a little while I bring it back I'm like yes that's the stuff you know it wears so well it looks beautiful on the skin beautiful in every light and I just it feel like I'm really enjoying the pairing with those other products um, another thought I had as I was doing the rest of my face if the incognito is too drying for you you might consider Maybelline instant age rewind as well that's one that I've paired with this also and liked but that Dalton loose powder looked so pretty on top of things the glowish powder from Huda all over the skin that is a really special and really unique powder and then you know your bronzer and blush and highlight steps do what you want to do but I think those core products are pretty important so thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you very soon I love you bye